what could life look like if we stopped keeping God at arm's length? What could blossom if we gave him the opportunity to show us how great he really is and allowed God to be God? Now, tonight is our very first night in Ohio. Welcome to Ohio. Um, we've been hearing about going to Ohio. I took my phone case off. Look, it's happy faces. Um, we've been hearing about Ohio for a really long time and now we are receiving our first revelation since being in Ohio. They're just barely there and as we talked about before, um, there are a lot of converts in Ohio that have been left alone <laughs> since their baptism with no leadership in the church and so there is a lot of fixing and problem solving and teaching the right ways because if you have someone walk out of the waters of baptism and then and then they're it's just them running the church um <laughs> well we have a lot of a lot of fixing and you also have a lot of people coming from a lot of different religions that are trying to bring in their beliefs and viewpoints um from their background into it. And so number one item of business is teaching um, and fixing. And they're about to receive a new law, which is needed, but also really exciting. People are really looking forward to it. And, and do you remember talking about um, um, Edward Partridge? He is top notch guy. This was about four or five chapters ago. It was in DNC. 36. Watch that video. It's pretty short. You're going to want to know all about him. Um, this is when he gets called as first bishop. But, but irrelevant to that, we're going to read a very quick 12 verses. And, and irrelevant to him getting called, we're going to make this obviously all about you. And what does, what, what? If we're talking about Elder Partridge... Why did I say that? Edward Partridge <laughs> and his new calling and their new season they're entering into in Ohio. What, what does that have anything to do with you? Let's find out. Okay, let's just read first and then we'll chit chat. So Doctrine and Covenants 41. Hearken and hear. O ye my people, saith the Lord and your God. Ye whom I delight to bless with the greatest of all blessings, ye that hear me, and ye that hear me not will I curse, and have professed, professed my name with the heaviest of all cursings. Mm, no thanks, I will pass on the heaviest of all cursings. <laughs> <laughs> Hearken, O ye elders of my church, whom I have called. Behold, I give unto you a commandment, that you shall assemble yourselves together to agree upon my word. And by the power of your faith, ye shall receive my law, that you may know how to govern my church, which they all really need right now, and have all things right before me. And I will be your ruler when I come. And behold, I come quickly. And ye shall see that my law is kept. He that receiveth my law and doeth it, the same is my disciple. And he that saith he receiveth it and doeth it not, the same is not my disciple. Good logic. <laughs> and shall be cast out from among you. For it is not meet that the things which belong to the children of the kingdom should be given to them that are not worthy or to dogs. Or the pearls cast before swine. And again, it is meet that my servant Joseph Smith Jr. should have a house built in which to live and translate. He just barely got to Ohio and they don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> and again, it is meet that my servant Sidney Rigdon should live as seemeth him good inasmuch as he keepeth my commandments. And again, I have called my servant Edward Partridge, and I give a commandment that he should be appointed by the voice of the church and ordained a bishop unto the church. Uh, and leave. So right now we're about 10, 10 minutes, 10 months into church establishment. So still super early. Um, so 10 months in, we get our first bishop under the church to leave his merchandise 
So he would, no, we'll get back to it. Leave his merchandise and spend all of his time in the labors of the church. We've actually heard those exact words before in his chapter in 36. To see all the things as it shall be appointed unto him in my laws in the day that I shall give him. And this because his heart is pure before me. For he is like unto Nathanael of old, in whom there is no guile. These words are given unto you that are pure before me. Wherefore, beware how you hold them. For they are to be answered upon your souls in the days of judgment, even so. Amen. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about you. It's great that... Here's... Let me... Let me show you... Let me tell you what I underlined and circled. Um, if I were to open up to this chapter randomly and glance down, what can my soul get? This is why... This is how I mark my scriptures. Are some, are some of these underlines a little out of context? Um, yeah, but I don't care. <laughs> so here's what I underlined in this chapter, and then I'm going to... Okay, um, I wrote, I delight to bless with the greatest of all blessings. That is what he delights and wants to do. Hear me. Uh, by the prayer of your faith, you shall receive. I will be your ruler. Receiveth and doeth. Um, I circled Edward Partridge because I because I love him. Um, there to be answered upon your soul. So those are just my few few markings in that. But let me talk. Let me talk a little bit of context so this can be relevant to you. Edward Partridge, as you know, he was a hat maker in Ohio. He was part of the big group that got baptized from Parley P. Pratt on their way to the Nephite mission, he was extremely successful. He had a very um, amazing reputation within the community. Everyone looked up to him. He, he just, oh, and he was, he was just top dog. You know what I mean? He had significant property holdings. Um, he was married. He had kids. And he was just very established, successful, very well respected. Um, he, his wife joined the church first. He goes to New York and ends up getting baptized out there. I am covered in dog hair because I was wrestling with the puppy. Um, gets baptized. Within two months of baptism, he gets called as bishop. He served in lots of missions. And his life was one of great dedication and sacrifice. Now, if we just rewind to the chapter in front of us, those three verses, who did we just barely finish talking about? Well, James Colville. Well, cool, great, who's James Colville? Well, he is the modern day version of the rich young ruler. And he was committed. He was so excited about this gospel that he went to Joseph and he says, I'm in. I'm all in. Can you please get revelation for me to know how else I can be part of this? And where's my, you know, how, where can I help? This is what I want to do. And he received a a blessing similar to Edward Partridge saying, well, I want you to, to leave what you're doing now. And James Coble was a very successful Methodist um, minister. So Edward and James, what do they have in common? Well, they're both converts. They both have this really great life and success established, and they're both asked to leave it behind. We just read, we just read in this chapter to, to leave, leave what you're doing, leave hat making, leave ministering in the Methodist church and, and serve me. And the difference between the two we already know is that James was promised the greatest of great blessings, greater than you could even, that you even knew existed. And what did he do? Well, he walked away from them. The very next day, he leaves New York, and that was that was it. That was his story. And the difference between them is Edward was just like, okay. He walked away from great financial success, um, success within his community, um, 
And, and he leaves to be the first bishop, and he walks away from comfortable living. He walks away from his finances, and he willingly puts himself in extreme poverty and, and hardship. And he was, you know, attacked by mobs, you know, really bad violence. He had to move to these different states. And it got so bad among the saints that days after he was tarred and feathered in public, um, just a few days after, he goes and, and he offers himself as a sacrifice saying, you can take my life if you can spare the life of these saints. Um, it's just it's just Edward Partridge, he's just a great guy. Anyways, you can know more about him in our DNC 36 video. So what does this mean uh, t to you? What What does this mean? Well, I don't know. <laughs> what if there's a question of, is there something that I need to leave behind to better fully serve him? Is there something that I can change to have that better dedication. Um, where are my priorities? Um, I I like to think of, you know, the fishermen in in the Bible, <laughs> and it's like they wanted fish and they spent all night trying to get fish and they couldn't until Christ came and then they had too much fish and and Christ was just like. If I wanted fish, I can get fish. You know what I mean? That's not what this is about. This, is, this isn't what life is about. Life isn't about fish. Or life is not about hats, Edward. Although it's a good thing that you're doing. Um, that's just not really what it's about. If he wants hats, he can get hats. If he wants fish, he can get fish. So what does he need? Well... He needs us, you know? Are we walking away from the greatest of great blessings like James? Or are we turning and sacrificing to Ed, like Edward for this better life? Um, a few questions that I marked down is, what kind of life could we be living if we stopped keeping God at arm's length? What could our life look like if we trusted him completely? Which is what we I talked about in like our last video, overcoming doubt and, and trusting him. Um, what if we see our seasons through? What could we receive if we gave... God the chance to show us how great he really is. What could life look like if we embraced the unexpected? Knowing who is guiding us. What could life look like if we allowed God to be God? One of my favorite scriptures to ever exist is, um, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Him being, well, Christ, obviously. <laughs> well, like, why? If, if God is watching his only begotten son be murdered, spit on, falsely judged, abused, bleeding from every pore, and yet he's saying it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why? Well, because God knew something we don't. Because <laughs> he knew that there is something so much more to come from all of this. Uh, he knows something greater. And so for me, that perspective, um, when we're given the choice to turn to him just a little bit more, even if it comes from, uh, comes with great sacrifice, which it will, but it pleased the Lord to bruise him. That greater perspective of there's something more than just what's right here, just right now. There's something more than all of this and, and to just trust him because he knows something we don't. 
that that our efforts are and our sacrifices and our faith are not in vain and that we are in fact on our way to magnification so i don't was that a tangent maybe but that's what i think of it pleased the lord to bruise him um, to move forward through great sacrifice that yeah maybe we need to leave behind and and maybe we need to leave behind a lot i can relate to that but in turn comes that great magnification um, and to trust him because he's got that better perspective. Um, anyways, 42 tomorrow. We got a... Okay, you know, we have 100 verses. So I'm going to come up... <laughs> With the strategic way to tackle that 100 verses, maybe we'll break it into halves. I'll look at it to see what the heck it says. Um, but but maybe, maybe, as always, just do a little self-reflection um, tonight. What tweaks can I make? Is there something, is there a different direction I need to be going in? Uh, yeah. To, to really prioritize what's most important. How can we better keep in mind the purpose of why we're even really here? You know what I mean? Um, anyways. <laughs> I'm a little out of it. Thanks for tuning in!